Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you one of the exclusive recipe that has been taken from one of our latest breed of courses called the Cooking Journey. The Cooking Journeys are all about learning by doing recipe and that new course called the Gastronomy Journey uh, is taking us through various regions of France and for each region we talk about the history, the dishes and then we're making three classic dishes from the region with a starter, a main and a dessert. In this episode we're exploring the north of France okay and I'm going to jump straight into the recipe because the north of France has got something very particular. The northern people make recipes their own way and the recipes are absolutely a melting pot of flavor with influence from England, Belgium, Holland and of course France. And the recipe of today is the answer from the north to the famous coque au vin you all know and love. But why would you use wine when you can use Belgium beer, which is just next to the north? So let's start and I'm going to show you on that recipe how to make the very famous ultra local poulet à la bière from the north. Let's go. There is really no way to stop people in the north to have a nice comforty meal, especially when you got beers around because we're you know next to Belgium. So this recipe, le coq à la bière, which is meant to, to be translated as the rooster in beer, is usually and typically made with a rooster, like the coq au vin, and which is three kilo, very hard to find out there. So instead we're gonna use a good quality two kilo chicken. That will do the job. Uh, this recipe, if very interesting, is the answer to the classic coq au vin found in other parts of France. <laughs> like I said, in the north, no, no, no. we're not going to make the coq au vin. We're going to make the coq à la bière. And this is what you need. This is what makes the difference. We ditch the wine and we're going to be using an amber, really good quality Belgian beer. This is a Trappist quadruple. It's 10% alcohol <laughs> bottle. But this is crucial to get this really deep flavor and color we're going to have. The rest of the technique is the same as the coco vin, pretty much. We're going to have mushrooms, bacon, shallots instead of onions, some flour, a little bit of cream in there. And if you can get your hands on, you can do a flambe with what's called the Geneva. Geneva or Univer is a Dutch alcohol that resembles gin. You could use gin instead or cognac, but it's only a little amount for the flambe. For the rest, it's a pretty simple recipe. We're going to be braising the chicken. So. What's most interesting is to make it and see the difference in taste because if you're tired of the classic cocova, well, this may be something for you. And now let's look at the mise en place. Now, this is a family dish meant to be really straightforward. So most of the recipe is all about measuring the ingredients. You'll find everything on the recipe card. And for the mise en place, purely speaking, you're going to have to cut the bacon into chunky lardons. This is a piece of fatty bacon I'm going to use to cook the chicken to render the fat, but you can use lard instead, okay? quartered mushroom, roughly sliced shallot, and that's about it. The chicken, you can bite whole like this and break it, break it apart, or just buy the pieces that you butcher. It will be fine. The beer, one liter of good quality beer, very important. And the final thing is the flavoring. We talked about the Geneva. It's an alcohol based on this the juniper berries that we're going to use in the dish. Juniper berries, it's a juniper alcohol. I don't have the Geneva, it can be hard to find, so I'm going to use cognac instead. This thing here is also important, is the brown sugar that's going to break down the bitterness of the beer that can sometimes appear in that kind of dish. If you want to be a real traditionalist, you have to use spice bread to do that recipe, but we're going to go with this version. I think we should be all right. So now let's put the apron on and let's go to the stove. Let's begin our recipe. As I said, don't worry, this is something that is pretty straightforward. It's a family dish. I'm starting here with a nice pot, a cast iron pot, and I'm using the fatty bacon, and it's sometimes called a lard gras, uh, or fat back, and I'm gonna use this as a source of fat. Now you can use butter and oil if you want, you can use lard, or if you even want, you could use, I think, duck fat or anything like that, okay? So I'm gonna bring this to temperature and start melting it. Now obviously this dish is all about flavor. The rooster usually provides you with lots of flavor, but here we're using a chicken. Chicken can lack in flavor. What can we do? You can use a bit of chicken stock to add some more chickeny flavor in there. But what we're going to do here, I'm going to show you the technique that we've seen before, which is the Paul Bocus technique. And the Paul Bocus technique, use the rest of the carcass. So I've broken my chicken in pieces and I'm using all the offcuts that I've got and the carcass. And I'm going to use this as a flavoring tool to get more flavor into my dish. 
So I'm going to start by browning the carcasses a little bit in the fat. So no need to spend the afternoon doing this. Huh? Uh, I'm going to take them out now, it's enough. Because we need to brown the chicken. So you will note I've cut actually my other piece of carcass in half, it was annoying me. And now we're going to brown the chicken pieces. Now for the chicken, I've pre-seasoned it with salt and pepper and I always add a little bit of flour on the uh, on the chicken because I think it you know it gets a kind of a better color. So if uh, you use bacon like this, you can, you can discard it and so you can put it. On, I'm going to put it on a side plate. If you take too much space, it's been rendering enough fat. It's getting really fatty in there. Uh, up, and we're going to spend a good five minutes. Do a nice coloration in this chicken. After four to five minutes, you get a nice coloring. You don't need to do it too much because we've got plenty of colorful amber beer for that recipe. Eh? So you're gonna do the same for each piece of chicken on every side, a little bit of coloring like that. All right, so when you're done, you're gonna have plenty of excess oil in there. So I'm gonna discard the excess oil and come back to the, the pan to before we continue with the rest of the recipe. As soon as your pan is ready, you remove the excess fat. I'm putting a shallots and of course I'm adding more fat, but a fresh one, a little bit of butter. And I'm gonna cook these shallots in butter just for a minute or two maximum on medium heat and then we're going to do deglazing very close to the action so you see what's happening with the butter is just cooking just enough the shots and now the deglazing so the deglazing i'm adding cognac usually it's geneva no flambe required you can if you want but the flambe is more for the show okay it's just to get some of the caramelized juices in there and then i'm going to follow up with a half of the bacon because i'm going to keep some for the decoration so a little bit of fresh bacon and the same it's going to happen for the mushroom, not all of them, because I'm going to pan fry them to a fresh one for the decoration. So a little bit, raise the heat too high, we're just going to give this some color. Just a few minutes is enough. And now what are we going to do? We're going to start to layer things. When we layer, because we're using the carcasses, it is good to use the tough stuff at the bottom. Okay, so the carcasses, if you use them for the flavor, we're going to have the chicken thighs and the legs, and we're going to have the... Uh, the chicken breast that needs to cook sh a shorter time on the top. Okay, so you see, I've got this. Maybe now I'm going to put some of the legs in there. Oh. And you arrange your chicken. So remember the tights as much as you can. You can bury them because they're going to cook for a long time. And the chicken breast, get them at the top. You can grab them easily. From here, a good grind of salt and pepper. You're going to follow with one or two tablespoons of flour. We're going to mix this as much as we can. I'll maybe take another two in there. So try to get that flour coated in everything. Okay. So remember, I haven't, I haven't put the chicken breast yet because you see all this work with the flour and everything. All the tough stuff. And now we're going to put the beer. Now adding the beer is obviously the time we've all been waiting for. You see that color? Look at that. And it's gonna be foaming. But you need plenty of beer, so let's put more. I'm gonna reduce the heat a little bit. Just two bottles, two times 33 centiliters. So there's almost 70 centiliters of beer in there. Let's not forget to add, of course, the chicken breast in there. And then we're going to put the aromatics. Remember. Aromatics, we've got three or four cloves, with a teaspoon of juniper berries in here. I'm going to add one or two bay leaves in here, and of course the sugar. And so the sugar, very important. And if you don't have the spice bread, you need to kind of give uh, all this coloring, this, uh, this taste in, in every way, and it's, it's really fragrant and nice. Huh? A final touch. I'm going to add some. I'm running out of time. Well, not the time, time, but the time from the garden. And uh, that's about it. So when we're here, what do we got? We've got a nice looking dish. And we've got all the fragrance. We've got a, we've got a chicken here. We've got the, the lovely bee. And that, and that sugar, you see, if I'm putting juice, it's, it's coloring everything. Now, you can put more beer if you want. But if you do this, you're going to also end up with lots of juice. It's going to be very thin, your preparation. Even though we've got a bit of flour. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to prefer... He is sticking to 70 centiliters already a lot. Put the lid on, okay? 
And I'm gonna cook this actually in the oven uh, at just about maybe 160 degrees uh, Celsius, I put the equivalent on Fahrenheit, to allow for everything to cook and steam nicely. Now remember, we're gonna have to take the uh, chicken breast out very quickly. So within, say, 15 minutes of cooking, we're gonna take out the chicken breast and let the rest to cook for a good 35, 30 minutes, something like this. Now if you want, you can also do this on the stove. On the stove, for me, sometimes I found that it just boils like this and the heat comes from a very small source just under the pot while the oven kind of englobed the whole thing. So I kind of prefer the oven, but I leave this to you. It's a personal uh, you know, preference. So we're going to put a lid on and we're going to cook this, remember, after 15 minutes you take the, you know, the, the breast out and for the rest, about good 40 minutes, okay? And then we're going to be done. The time has passed and look at my chicken. It is really, really cooked. I've left it a bit more because I really wanted to cook it properly. So what I'm going to do here, immediately, I'm going to scoop off all of the meat here and put it in a tray on the side. Once done, I'm going to follow up and get rid of all the carcasses and discard them. So once you're done, you're left with the sauce. Okay, and look at that color. Beautiful, now I can't, <laughs> I'm gonna have a little try. Ooh, now I'm liking this. Now this is totally different than what you would have with wine. And wow, I love the difference already. But it's very thin, so what we're gonna do? Turn the heat to high, we're gonna add some cream and reduce that sauce to a semi kind of spoon quantity consistency as usual. And that's gonna be it. Okay. Very important to remember, this is not a chicken in cream. So a bit of cream, yes. Okay, a tablespoon, just to adjust the, uh, you know, the color and fix the taste with the beer, but that's about it. So you see that color? You want to keep that kind of brownish color, very important. Huh? So I'm gonna bring this to the boil and leave this to reduce for, you know what, a good five minutes. And while this is happening, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with the chicken, the usual trick to color it a bit more. Now the sauce is reducing. Now look at my chicken there in the back. The little trick, skin side up. I'm going to place this under the grill very briefly in a very hot grill, the top shelf, to color the skin and crisp it up, just to claim this color so that when you present, you can have that nice kind of, you know, picture worthy kind of look, rather than have something a little bit boilish, kind of, you know, it's been boiled, like, I don't like it. I like to have a little crispy skin on there. So while this is happening, not now, so it's going to be just a few minutes and that's going to be it. If you have time now, you can pan fry your bacon and the mushrooms, which is something I've done right here. I've got the garnish for the final decoration with a bit of parsley, and it's going to be it. We're going to be ready to serve. Let's go. My sauce has now reduced, and I'm going to show you how it looks like. I still have the garnish on here. Remember, it's a home dish. It's still thin. It is meant to be like this. It's not meant to be a cream sauce. It is more like a jus. And it's got intense flavors in there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the sauce out, put it in a sauce bottle on the side. I'm going to dress up the chicken and put the final garnish on the table. So here we are. To recap, this is the chicken in beer. I would not call the cock in beer like the rooster in beer because usually you need a rooster, but that's not a rooster. It is the chicken, but guess what? It works perfectly. It is a departure from the real recipe, like from the coq au vin, and it is brilliant because the north really does not try to imitate the other region. They are making their own thing. And this is another discovery on this gastronomic journey that I really urge you to try. And honestly, the fries idea would not be bad. <laughs> that completes this recipe. This recipe is already. Now we're ready for the dessert, of course, because for the dessert, we've got something quite special. This is how the northern people make a tiramisu. It's not called a tiramisu, of course. It's called a tiramisu. Let's go.